Have you ever wondered why people dress up as horrific characters, beg for candy at your doorstep, and then try to scare you to death in October? Well, today we will learn the origins and traditions of the strange holiday known as Halloween. In the misty realms of ancient history, Halloween finds its roots. A time of year steeped in mystery and superstition, it was originally celebrated as Samhain, which simply means summer's end. Samhain was an ancient Celtic festival marking the end of the harvest season, a time to celebrate bounty and remember their loved ones. As the leaves withered and fell, so too did the barrier between the living and the dead. The Celts believed that on the eve of Samhain, the veil thinned, allowing spirits to cross over and roam the earth. But the Celts weren't alone in their belief of otherworldly happenings. Across the expanse of the Roman Empire, the festival of Lemuria was observed. This was a time when Romans performed rituals to exorcise the malevolent and restless spirits of the dead from their homes. They would walk barefoot, cleanse their hands three times, and toss black beans over their shoulders as offerings to the spirits. They would also pour milk on graves of their loved ones, hoping to placate the deceased spirit. Both these ancient traditions, Samhain and Lemuria, shared a common thread, a belief in the thinning of the veil between our world and the spirit world. These festivals of old were not just about fear and foreboding, they were also about respect and remembrance for the departed, an acknowledgement of the cycle of life and death, growth and decay. As the Romans conquered Celtic lands, these beliefs and traditions began to intertwine, setting the stage for the evolution of Halloween. The roots of this spooky holiday dig deep into the fertile soil of human history, nourished by ancient cultures and their timeless traditions. Halloween, as we know it today, is a vibrant tapestry woven from threads of history, superstition, and celebration, each strand adding its unique color to the captivating story of this age-old festival. Enter the Catholic Church with their own spin on the ancient traditions. The Church, looking to integrate and transform these pagan festivities, introduced three key holidays, All Hallows Evening, All Hallows Day, and All Souls Day. A hallow simply means a holy person. These names were later changed to All Saints Evening, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. All Saints Day was a time to honor all the saints and martyrs, known and unknown. Sandwiched by All Saints Eve and All Souls Day, these three days collectively became known as All Hallowtide. Through different dialects, All Hallows Evening was shortened to All Hallows Even, and finally, Halloween. But why did the church move these holidays to align with Samhain? The answer is intriguing. By aligning these holidays with Samhain, the church sought to Christianize the ancient festival, making it easier for converts to adapt while still maintaining a semblance of their old traditions. Now, let's delve into the concept of praying for the dead, a practice that became prevalent during All Hallowtide. The church believed that prayers could help speed the soul's journey through purgatory and into heaven. But here's where it gets interesting. To encourage prayers for the departed, a custom arose where the poor would go door to door on All Souls Day, offering to pray for the dead in exchange for food. This practice was known as souling, and the food given was often a soul cake, a small round cake which represented a soul being freed from purgatory. The introduction of soul cakes is fascinating, isn't it? It's one of the earliest examples of what we now recognize as trick-or-treating. The tradition of dressing up, often as saints, angels, or demons, also emerged during this period, further deepening the connection between All Hallowtide and Halloween. So the Catholic Church, in an attempt to align and integrate the pagan festival of Samhain, ended up adding a new layer to Halloween. They intertwined it with the concept of all saints and the remembrance of the dead, giving the celebration a deeper, more spiritual meaning. And this, my friends, is how the Church's influence seeped into the ancient traditions, reshaping them into the Halloween we know today. Thus, the Church added a new layer to Halloween, intertwining it with the concept of all saints and the remembrance of the dead. As autumn turned the world dark and cold, Halloween took a sinister turn. This was a time when the abundance and warmth of summer gave way to the scarcity and chill of winter. Not only did the weather change, but so did the landscape. Plants that once flourished began to wither and die, 
reflecting the cycle of life and death that is so often associated with this time of year. In the past, the onset of winter also brought with it an increase in mortality rates. With no modern medicine to speak of, many people succumb to the harshness of the cold months. So, it's no wonder that the transition from light to dark, warm to cold, life to death, became intertwined with the idea of the dead crossing a veil to interfere with the living. These elements combined to cast a long, ominous shadow over the season, setting the stage for what we now consider the dark side of Halloween. The characters that we associate with Halloween also have their roots in this fear. Witches, for instance, were believed to be women who had made a pact with the devil. They were feared and persecuted throughout history, particularly during the Middle Ages. Their appearance of a large hat, broom, and a cat with a cauldron came from the appearance of a medieval farm woman. Her large hat protected her from the sun, she cooked on a cauldron and probably had a cat as a companion and might have lived alone. As a farmer, she would have knowledge of plants and herbs that had medicinal cures, so she would have been a healer. This would seem like supernatural magic to a medieval Christian. Ghosts, on the other hand, are spirits of the departed, believed to walk the earth on Halloween night when the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. The sheet that we see is the burial shroud that was wrapped around the body when buried. Monsters, too, became part of Halloween lore. Their origins often lie in our deepest fears and anxieties. Take Frankenstein's monster, for example, a creature born of scientific hubris and man's fear of playing God. Or Dracula, the aristocratic vampire who preys on the innocent, embodying fears of the unknown, the dark, and the loss of mortality that occurred during this time. The bat associated with Dracula would have come out at night in search for food and would have been attracted to the bugs that were drawn to the fires burning at night. Later, in 1836, the story of Jack O'Lantern was published. In this story was a devious man named Jack. He was so awful that he was thrown out of hell and told to wander the space in between heaven and hell forever. The devil took pity on Jack and gave him one ember from hell which he carried in a lantern made from a hollowed out turnip. This scary story of a soul in between life and death intertwined with the Halloween legends and later became the symbol for Halloween itself. European children began to make their own lanterns made from hollowed out turnips. After they migrated to America, they traded the hard turnips for the large abundant pumpkins and created corpse-like lanterns out of them. This became the iconic symbol of the Halloween season. These characters, each terrifying in their own way, serve as embodiments of our fears and anxieties. They represent the dark side of Halloween, a time when our deepest fears are given form and allowed to roam free. Halloween thus became a night when the veil lifted and all manner of supernatural beings roamed the earth. From ancient rituals to modern traditions, Halloween has come a long way. Once a time of fear and superstition, Halloween has evolved into a holiday filled with costumes, candy, and community gatherings. But how did we get here? Let's take a closer look at this evolution. The modern-day trick-or-treating tradition didn't become popular until the mid-20th century. Before that, Halloween was often associated with mischief and vandalism, partly due to the influence of Guy Fawkes Day. Celebrated on November 5th, Guy Fawkes Day commemorated the failed gunpowder plot of 1605, where he tried to blow up the King of England and Parliament due to religious persecution. It is celebrated with bonfires, fireworks, and sometimes acts of violence. When this holiday was brought to America, it seemed to merge with Halloween, creating a dangerous situation at the end of October. It escalated to vandalizing cars, breaking windows, and even setting buildings on fire. Communities gathered to find a way to deter this bad behavior. To curb this chaos, Communities began organizing parties and costume parades, aiming to provide a safer alternative for young people. The first of these parades was in Allentown, PA in 1905, which started as a simple costume march has since grown into a massive annual event. Early Halloween costumes were crudely made at home. Later, businesses saw an opportunity to cash in and started making inexpensive prefabricated costumes out of paper. After realizing the danger of paper mixed with candles, they later started making safer costumes for kids to wear. 
The practice of wearing costumes harkens back to the Celtic festival of Samhain, where people would dress up to ward off harmful spirits. This tradition was carried into the Middle Ages with All Souls Day, where children would go door to door, begging for soul cakes in exchange for prayers for the dead. This practice, known as souling, is considered the precursor to our modern trick-or-treating. As for the candy, it's believed that the tradition of giving out sweets started in the 1930s as a way to appease tricksters and prevent pranks. Homeowners would invite children into their homes and give them homemade treats like candy apples and popcorn balls. They would also bob for apples and get prizes. This started the phrase, trick or treat. If the homeowner didn't give the children treats, they would pull a dirty trick on them. Over time, candy companies recognized the potential of this holiday and began marketing their products specifically for Halloween, leading to the sweet-filled festivities we know today. Mars Bars, Mr. Goodbar, Baby Ruth, and yes, even Reese's were all part of the game. The traditions we associate with Halloween today were born out of a melting pot of ancient rituals, religious observances, advantageous advertisers, and attempts to tame the chaos of Guy Fawkes Day pranks that accelerated at the end of October to November. So, as you don your costume and head out to collect your candy, remember the rich history that has shaped this spooky celebration. From ancient festival to pop culture phenomenon, Halloween has truly left its mark. Its influence has seeped into every corner of our media, shaping our perceptions and reinforcing its place in our yearly cycle. Halloween began slowly and wasn't celebrated everywhere until the mid-1900s. In 1966, the creator of Charlie Brown, Charles Schultz, decided to create an animated Halloween special. As a child, Charles adored Halloween, but he noticed a gap in holiday programming. While Christmas had its cherished specials, Halloween seemed overlooked. Determined to change that, Charles conceived a unique idea, a Halloween special where Linus, confused about the holidays, eagerly awaits the Great Pumpkin to deliver toys on Halloween night. This innovative concept catapulted Halloween into the mainstream, transforming it into a beloved family tradition that we have today. From there, it continued to accelerate. In the 1970s, Halloween made its cinematic debut amidst a surge of horror films. This pivotal era introduced iconic classics such as Halloween, directed by John Carpenter, laying the groundwork for a genre that would embrace the eerie essence of this special holiday. Carpenter's depiction of a serial killer stalking on Halloween night was a groundbreaking and spine-chilling concept that captivated audiences, igniting a newfound enthusiasm for celebrating Halloween. These films have since become an integral part of Halloween traditions, tapping into our shared fascination with spine-tingling scares. In 1993, Disney unveiled Hocus Pocus, a film that, while initially receiving modest attention, has since become a beloved staple of Halloween entertainment. Following the hilarious antics of the Sanderson sister witches in Salem, the movie has evolved into one of America's most cherished family Halloween classics inspiring multiple sequels and annual marathons. Alongside Hocus Pocus, the Disney Halloween Town franchise, beginning with Halloween Town in 1998, has also left an indelible mark on the Halloween season. This whimsical series, featuring a town inhabited by witches, vampires, and other supernatural beings, captures the imagination of viewers young and old with its charming characters, captivating storylines, and vibrant visuals. Similarly, the Harry Potter series has become synonymous with Halloween themes, featuring iconic Halloween scenes and introducing a host of Halloween-themed wizard characters. From the iconic feast in the Great Hall to encounters with ghosts and dark creatures, the series adds an extra layer of excitement to the holiday, inspiring countless fans to incorporate wizarding elements into their festivities and costumes. Costumes, too, have evolved with the times. What began as simple disguises to ward off evil spirits has grown into a vibrant culture of cosplay. The creativity and craftsmanship that goes into these costumes is a testament to our enduring fascination with the characters and stories that inspire us. From witches to werewolves, superheroes to villains, rubber to robotic masks, every Halloween sees a parade of pop culture icons roaming the streets in search of treats. The commercialization of Halloween has also become a significant aspect of its modern identity, 
Halloween-themed merchandise, from decorations to candy, floods stores every fall, contributing to a multi-billion dollar industry. This economic impact is second only to Christmas, illustrating just how integral Halloween has become in our society. Today, Halloween stands as a testament to our fascination with the macabre, our love for a good scare, and our enduring traditions that connect us to our ancient past. As we carve our pumpkins, don our costumes, eat candy, honor the dead, and go to haunted houses, we participate in a celebration that transcends time, a celebration that, despite its eerie undertones, brings us together in the spirit of fun and creativity.